my wife and I would travel twice a year to London and then on to Paris and sometimes on to Florence. We'd fly over uh, the overnight thing, land at Heathrow, six o'clock in the morning, take the tube into the hotel, shower, shave. By 10.30, I was out on the street making my first visit. This one guy had a shop and we used to see him and, and I would be going through his stuff. And by take an hour break at a local pub and then go back to work and he would just come in and throw a number at me. We package it up, ship it, and then when we get it here, we start to sort it out, price stuff at whatever we think is a fair price, and just put it out. And it was impossible to lose money. Everything changed in one trip. Went back and I'm there at 10.30, he opens the door, he says, I don't have anything for you. I said, what? And he turns around, he says, it's all in there, and it's the first iMac. Oh, if you remember, that, it looked like that round thing, blue. He says, it's all in there. He says, and I'm selling all over the world. Changed everything. The internet changed everything. It was a time when um, I was working 18 hours a day selling antiques. I'd work here and then I'd go home from 10 till 2 or 3 in the morning and list things on, on eBay. And at that point, I was making $500 to $1,500 a night, seven days a week. I was afraid I was afraid not to work because I could look at it and say, geez, I'm going to lose $1,000 if I don't work tonight. You know, that was a nice run of five to eight eight years but that dissipated too now where eBay and the internet selling is the same as antique shop selling they only buy it if it's a deal they only buy it if they're stealing it the only downside to the internet is that everybody's an expert now and sometimes I can diminish uh, my own kind of skill and experience for example my eye my time I mean my investment, I stepped up and I paid for this object. In some cases I've restored it, I've framed it, I've researched it. That all has value, but frequently the internet, um, you know, people just sort of see this number and they make decisions and think they know everything because they know what you paid for. It. Well, and with the advent of the computer, I mean, you can just go on the computer and look up whatever's written on the bottom of it, and you automatically know what it's going to sell for. Sometimes you end up thinking it's worth a lot more because it tells you what people are trying to sell it for. They're not telling you what it actually sold for. Most of these reality shows are staged. You know that. I mean, the, the whole nature of reality, it's a fantasy. They, they're, they're, they're getting what pickers do. I mean, that is what pickers do. I really wish they'd go and find, American Pickers would find the treasures because these treasures are here. But see, American Pickers is geared to what they think the population of America wants to see. That that, you know, oil can that they bought for $50 is worth, you know, 5000 They want to see that. Um, interesting that the TV shows now, and the Pickers is one of them, and there's three or four of these shows give a bad impression in my mind, real bad taste about the people in this business as we're wheeler dealers. Some of us are unscrupulous. Some of us will pay you 50 cents for a $5,000 piece or something. It's, it's crazy. And they, they're generating, they're getting a lot of interest in antiques and, and people think they're going to go out and go picking and, and do this and, and and i've been a picker my entire life i was i'm the origin of a picker they're shows okay they're fabricated they're not the real thing they're entertainment you see these guys go on into, and, and have a ball going out and buying stuff and spend a half a day there and buy two things now a real antique dealer goes in and buys a whole barn full of stuff but it's entertainment there um and if you notice, they, they buy stuff, but they never sell stuff. 
It's not like people want to become great connoisseurs and learn about materials and techniques in art history. They want to make money, and that's what those shows kind of push. But um, you know, I can't fault them for that. I think we all have to make a living, and if people can make it that way, that's great. But uh, in general, I think it's you know, this is a field that's not necessarily entertaining to lots of people, and if it makes it more accessible and um, you know has people looking more closely at what's around them, I think it's a very very good thing. So. I'm a fan. I think that antiquing and collecting things has always been in my blood. Even from when I was a little kid, I was always scrounging, always collecting something, always searching for some little oddity there. One of the things that I think is sort of magical and fun about this shop is that I have so many things that nobody would ever be looking for, but when you find it, you love it and you want it. And some of the things that are most captivating to me it's, it's nothing anybody needs or thinks they want it's something completely unique it's a wonderful survival what i loved about the business 20 30 years ago was everything was fresh and new what happens over the years is that you begin to see the same things over and over and over again so it takes a lot more to excite you which is nice, but what has happened also is that the fact that it's harder and harder to sell stuff takes some of the fun out of even finding uh, new things that you've never seen before. I like fixing things, I like taking things that are broken and useless and making them you know, new and usable again. Um, that's the fun part to me. But it's a funny thing, I get up every day, 363 days a year, and do the same thing over and over again, and if you gave me the choice, I'd do it anyway. I was working for 75 cents an hour with one guy, which was minimum wage in those days. So uh, I was loaned to him to do the lifting and carrying, um, and I was just a hired hand. He would try to explain things to me, but I could care less. I just didn't care. Now, what's this? this is 1955, I think. Whenever I wanted to get paid, He'd say, well, why don't we roll it over the next week? Now, when you're working for 75 cents an hour, you know, it takes a long time to get any real money. He owed me about $100. It's a good part of the summer. So I told him, I want to get paid. And he says, how much do I owe you? And I says, yeah, and I, it's a number close to $100. He says, wow, that much? And, and he says, well, what are you going to do with the money? I says, I don't know. I just want the money. And he says, look. And he points to this engraving of George Washington in a frame, and next to it, in the bottom right corner, is a handwritten letter by Washington. He said, I don't know who's George Washington. So I'm looking at it, I said, so what? He said, well, it's a handwritten letter by George Washington. So what? And he says, well, he says, by the time of the bicentennial, this will be worth quite a bit of money. I says, nah, I want the 100 bucks. He says, I'm telling you, kid, by the time of the bicentennial, this will be worth a lot of money. Now, I don't even know what he's talking about. What's a bicentennial? It's just the 200th anniversary of the country. And when's that? I mean, I was just thick. And he says, well, it'll be uh, 1975. I says, are you kidding? I said, I'll be dead in 1975. Give me the damn money. Okay, fast forward, 1975. I'm in the business, I'm in. never got out. So now the, um, I get an auction catalog out of New York. I think it was Christie's. Item number one, photograph. Exactly the way he had showed it to me, right? What's the chances? I open it up and I see it. I says, damn. Now, the auction had already happened, so I called down to Christie's, and I said, just for the, because now it's killing me, I got to know. And they said, oh, it went for $21,000. I enjoy talking to people and meeting with people and, and then discovering stuff. Every day, you're finding something. You're researching something. Things that you have no idea what were when you started, you suddenly know something else. So you improved yourself.